I'd love to know what people thought so when they approach a roundabout. Half of them don't know what they're doing at all. No, what I look at it is you, you give way to the right, but you don't pull up to the roundabout, stop, and then see if there's help coming. It's better than France. Oh. Traffic cops Gav Pearson and Dan Stoppard are heading out to patrol North Yorkshire's 50 mile stretch of the A1 motorway. Cutting through the heart of the county, it's a busy corridor for crime. Some intel from Cleveland that's got a large quantity of drugs. Confirmation southbound and it's got product on board. It's believed it's headed back down towards South Yorkshire. So Mercedes, possibly silver. We've just received some recent intel of a car coming south on the A1. Uh, the intelligence says that he's carrying a large quantity of what is believed to be Class B drugs. It's potentially linked to an Albanian OCG. The Mercedes is being tracked by police cameras and monitored by North Yorkshire's force control. Oh, Albanians are travelling up from South there. Yorkshire, West Yorkshire, up to the get the shouting us. Gone south by my clock three minutes ago, three minutes ago. Not going to be far off us, mate, to be honest. The information we receive indicate a new serious crime group. It tends to be foreign national males growing large quantities of, of cannabis and transporting it throughout the country. More units have joined Gav and Dan in the search for the silver Mercedes. Yep, that's all received. Stand by. There's a silver Mercedes just gone under. Yeah, I've got it, got it. Yeah, like I said, it's Mercedes. Me and silver. Yeah, so we've just had a confirmed sighting, so we're just going to try and make some ground now to catch up to it. What a... Oh, my like on the other side. Go on, just go on, go, go. What are these people willing to do to get away? Or are they going to suddenly take off at high speed? Are they going to turn around and ram us? What level will they go to? But this all depends on if we sight the vehicle. People may associate traffic officers with people speeding or doing traffic offences. Actually, what we do do is we keep the road safe and we tackle criminality using the road. Joining the pursuit is Sergeant Tim Wilson, who spent most of his career targeting organised crime groups and drug couriers. We're seeing an increasing pattern of drug supply that's travelling through the county. It is challenging, but that's what we're there for, and we've got officers that can go to strategic places very quickly to try and target these criminals. Just in front of the van. Yeah, I've got it, mate. Romeo 21, we have got eyeball on the subject vehicle. It is moving to lane two of four. Speed is seven zero. Two one is obviously aware of our presence due to the lightness of traffic with no vehicles for cover now. It's not reacted to us being here. It's into lane one, speeds down to five zero. He's gonna be definitely fully aware of our presence now. Last time we got one of these on A1, boot waffle. I think we ended up with 160 grand's worth of something missing boot. It's like a tingling sensation that you know something's going to happen, something big's going to happen. You've got to remain calm. Committed, committed, southbound. Let me see, thanks. I don't know where he's going here. Oh, you absolute. Yeah, it's coming to a stop on our shoulder just after the slip. Open it! Open it! Thank you. Have the key out. Take the key out. Thank you. Initially, I'm starting to think, has he got anything in there at all? Because he ain't reacting to us. You'd expect somebody to get a little bit nervous. Has somebody fed us some duff information? These thoughts all go through your head. We're all right. Yeah. We're going to be looking at a quite large quantity. 
of drugs. Why has his driver pulled off? If he's got this quantity of drugs, why has he stopped? There's quite a, quite a lot in there. Right, buddy. You speak English? No. None at all. I'll let you know, you're under arrest on suspicion of possession with intent to supply Class B, namely cannabis, ID card. Even that smells of cannabis. Thank you. Is uh, producer an Albanian driving license? Just come down this way, bud. This way. What language? Albanian. Sit. A little bit in English. No. Okay. He wasn't putting up any resistance at all. He wasn't showing any signs of wanting to hide anything. So it kind of makes no sense. Decent job. Every bag's full. We need a space book in Ellen Road. Coming up. There you go. The intelligence crackdown continues. Uh, do I have the right to have a solicitor? And uncovers a bigger haul than expected. Now that's serious organised crime level. And got it, got it, got it. get that beat unit out of the pool. A hunt for a stolen van. Criminals do like to go under our noses. Leagues officers with a childcare problem. Two kids in the car. It was stolen in a burglary in South Yorkshire. Hello, it's Dan Stoppard from North Yorkshire Traffic. Traffic cops Dan and Gav have arrested a suspected drug runner after receiving police intel. Where did you go into? Custody. He's believed to be transporting a boot full of cannabis for an organised crime group. Yes, I just introduced myself to him and I'm ready for your instruction. The suspect says he doesn't speak any English. Interpreter, I'm the custody sergeant here at Ellen Road today, and then if you could just listen out to the allegation. Uh, do I have the right to have a solicitor? Yes, we'll get to that point shortly. I just need to find out why he's here first. With the driver facing some tricky questions, Sergeant Tim Wilson... Are you happy? ..and Specialist Search Officer Chris Howarth can now carry out a full search of the suspect's vehicle. There's one, two, but that one's packed a bit thicker. When you think you can probably break uh, them buds up into 20 pound deals, that, that there, you know, you're looking at, looking at thousands and thousands of pounds worth of cannabis uh, in the bags. Yeah, there you go. Suitcase full. Okay, why is it here, please? We received information of a vehicle travelling southbound on the A1. This gentleman was the driver, and in the boot area was located a large quantity of vacuum-sealed cannabis. That's a hell of a lot. That's not just somebody that's just doing it here and there, one-off, trying to earn a little bit of money. That's serious organised crime level. Across the UK, Police intel is used to crack down on drug supply chains, like this one, worth billions of pounds a year. Cleveland has an increasing problem with an Albanian OCG that is dealing in that area. The inspector up in Cleveland has done some checks on the vehicle and sees that it heads up and it quickly heads back down again. I'll just give you that back. Working with other forces and the neighbouring forces is really important and, and had it not been for that, we probably wouldn't have been able to get in position in time. The movement of drugs by organised gangs is becoming a daily occurrence throughout the North East. Just 12 hours ago, the traffic cop seized another vehicle which was carrying £70,000 worth of cannabis. There's a lot of work that we all do now with forensics and investigation with electronic devices, the vehicle, etc., to try and work out who these people are to put them to justice. We can't assume that everybody that carries drugs is the same person. We've got to work out where they are in the chain. 
you know, are they somebody that's been criminally exploited? Or are they somebody that's at the top of the chain? We work in a construction site. Construction site. There's basically a suitcase full and three like bags for lives full. And maybe it'd be about seventy-eight thousand pound wholesale value, but street value about hundred and thirty thousand. Oh yeah, this is quantities on an organised crime scale list. This is definitely a worthwhile stop. My colleague uh, has just found a search mirror. I've never found one before on a search, and it's something we use all the time for getting underneath difficult areas of the vehicle. We're just trying to put two and two together here and whether there's something underneath the vehicle that's been put there, possibly a tracking device, so the organised crime group could actually follow it coming down the A1. So can you just tell him that I just put a copy of his rights in Albanian? When it comes to this driver, he could have been put under a great amount of pressure by people behind the scenes that are going to do X, Y and Z to his family, to his friends, if he doesn't do it. We're going to seize all his SIM cards. So we're able to not only look at the investigation side of it, but we're able to look at the other side of it and say, is there a welfare element in all this? There we go. Another one hidden under the seat. Chris? Yeah? That one hidden under the driver's seat. Right. There was one in the centre console, but that were hidden underneath. Yeah. When this amount of drugs is being conveyed down one of our big motorways, they'll be rung several times on that route. Um, just for an update, are you still all right? Are you aware of anyone following you? These are just SIM cards that are bagged up separately. Now, when they're not answering the phone because they're with us, it starts to send a bit of a, uh, what's wrong, is anything happened to him? Now they'd, they'd find out that it's parked at uh, the police station, so uh, they're probably panicking slightly over that. Cannabis farms. The people that are running them are from out of the area, um, so that means they use our road networks to travel to and from either selling or moving this drug, so it's for us to be in the right place to stop them. And we've done it again today. There are 11,000 police cameras across the UK helping the traffic cops pinpoint criminals on the move. What about if somebody come to you, Dan, and said, I'll give you a million quid, you've got to transport a boot full of Class A from Scotland yeah. down to Cornwall. Yeah. Would you do it? No. It's 7.30 p.m. and traffic cops Dan and Gab are back on patrol near York. Just stand by for message. Suspect vehicle believed to be on Cologne plates. He's gone on his way to um, try and intercept a clone vehicle. It's hit on the A64 coming into our area. When a vehicle of interest triggers a camera in North Yorkshire, force control is alerted immediately. Um, we've just had a reliable sighting. It's a clone. Volkswagen Transporter. It could be a stolen vehicle. Criminals do like to hide the vehicles the best they can to go under our noses and get to where we can intercept it before it has a chance to dart off the main roads. Nine times out of ten, it is not just that vehicle is on false plates. Often the driver has got no licence, no insurance, potentially wanted. Four of us, maybe there might be even five units made up from traffic and firearms. Get that beat unit out the ball. Reinforce it. Just go straight alongside it, mate. Go straight alongside it. Go straight alongside it. There you go. Your van? It's not for the work van, is it? 
What's been? She's got two kids here. Can you just confirm the chassis, please? Now, I'm coming back an exact match on a stolen VW Transporter, stolen uh, by means of burglary. The vehicle's stolen. It was stolen burglary. in a burglary in South Yorkshire. Right. No, I'm not joking at all. All right, it's a clone vehicle. Obviously, the vehicle's going to be coming with us. Well, you're not going to be able to drive it oh are you? Because it's a Nick vehicle. You're disqualified as well anyway. <laughs> he, owns a, he owns a body shop. It's a customer's vehicle. He's got a body shop. The vehicle was brought into him well over six months previously for some work doing on it, and he'd had no contact from the person that had brought it in. That, just to me, doesn't ring true. Pass it back to South Yorkshire and get the kids um, a lift back. We get the van, and then if he's got the kids, then... Yeah. To consider what we do with them, don't we? Yeah. The immediate priority for the officers is the well-being of the man's two young children. Is it Dad? Yeah. Please don't worry. Okay. It, he he might not know about it at all. Just gonna search your person first. Okay. okay. Just... It's all right. We'll get you back home. All right. And he'll be, don't worry. Is it your dad? He'll be looked after. Don't worry. But obviously, your Dad shouldn't be driving anyway, should he? We've got kids to sort out, yeah. Have you got anybody that we can no. contact? Mum, we've got mum, haven't we? Wife. So can I ring your wife? She, she's got no, no transport. Yeah. No. yeah. What's, what's uh, daughter's name? Because she's the most upset. No, no, no. Yeah. Transportation. Well, upset's okay, darling. Yeah, sweet. Come on, darling. Come on. Yeah, all right, sweetheart. Having spoken to the kids' mum, the police can now take them home. He's shown as disqualified, he hasn't got a licence, so obviously he's going to have to answer some questions for that. Um, maybe a reason why he's driving this van on false plates, trying to sit up here genuine. All right, lad, um, we're sorting out your kids. They're going to be on the, way, on the way home. Obviously, we've got the driving offences, haven't we? Which is disco driving. You know, disqualified driving can get sent to prison. No, That's what. This is what you got to think about. And, yeah, think about and if you no, no. if you've got little ones in a business, then the last thing you want is to get sent down, do you? That's what I mean. I, I, didn't, I didn't even think about it. Yeah. You might have a very short space of time, and then they're gone. Knowing who that is and what car they've used and how they've got here, it's a massive challenge for us, and we have to rely a, a great deal on technology. North Yorkshire is the largest county in England. A network of police cameras is vital for tracking criminals in an area this vast. Next to all units, there's been a uh, the tracking has called in. They've got live updates. No, don't tell me he's on his mobile phone on that bed. North of York, the traffic cops are searching for a driver who's triggered a police camera. Sent to Oscar Romeo units, just getting a Sussex vehicle uh, heading northbound. A wanted males travelling northbound, believed wanted for uh, a serious or for an assault, and it could well be domestic assault. Male offender in relationship with It's alleged the man cut his partner's hair and held scissors to her throat. Joining the motorway, there's an update. Looking at his previous, she's probably going to go walk down. Police camera data can help build up a picture of where he's likely to go. So the vehicle's probably 30 seconds or so in front of us. The officers need to stop the suspect before he makes it back home to his partner. One for nine. I am directly behind them. Coming up. She looks a liar. The wanted man reveals all. She's bisexual and I don't accept that. And an intelligence operation targeting Yorkshire's drug lines. Drugs, mark, heroin, crack cocaine. Leads to an arrest. You've got something to hide and we're going to find it. Are you all right, though? Yeah. <laughs> We've got an audience.
one for nine. I am directly behind the vehicle now, half of our marker ball. In North Yorkshire, the traffic cops are responding to police intel about a wanted man who has allegedly threatened to kill his partner. Go for a stop first lay by. Vehicle stopped, stand by. Just want to jump out for me? OK. Just want to put your hands like that for me. All right. What I have to tell you is that we've got information to say that you are wanted. All right? Maybe? You are wanted by the police for an assault. But I'm arrested. Oh, so you are under arrest, yeah. All right, OK. What I'm going to do is pop you into the back of this police car. All uh, right, OK. <laughs> Just jump in for me. <laughs> no, no, that's how they're meant to be, like that. All right. They're not designed for comfort. I've obviously told him he is under arrest and cautioned him, and I believe it's to do with an assault, if you can tell me the details. Evidence by questioning male offender in relationship to this gym. Allegedly, the man held scissors to his partner's throat whilst threatening to kill her. <laughs> Receive, thank you. She's a, she's a liar. I got, I got, I got proof. <laughs> right. Um, obviously, that's just the allegation, okay? Darby needs to look at that, I need to investigate it, all right? Mm. One for nine, the hub. One for nine, go ahead. I could do with a van. Yeah, she's a bitch. Yeah, Roger. Right. She's bisexual, and uh, I don't accept that. Uh, it's a very big. One for nine, the van state six. Right, okay, just follow me. Last year, 46,000 people were wanted by the police in England and Wales. Over 40% have been on the wanted list for a year or more and remain at large. We are here. <laughs> He's wanted for an offence of threats to kill. Uh, it's a long story. I will, I will say everything. I want to finish this story normal for me in my life. This way. If you need anything, if you just look at me quickly. Yeah? Just on the side here, opposite the sink, is a button for you to press to call if you need anything. Silver to 1268, you're on this channel, brother. Receive. The vehicle is believed to be involved in the supply of Class A. The supply of drugs into and out of the county is a big problem for the traffic cops. Across Yorkshire, there were nearly 14,000 drug seizures in the space of a year, more than one every hour. Just a bit of snow that's happening, everybody's still experiencing the usual crimes. Traffic cop Chris Storey is on patrol near Harrogate, a regular route for cross-border drug supply between North and West Yorkshire. OK, and who's bringing this crack cocaine in? Right, OK. Where are these dealings taking place? Tell everyone in the community to take notes of what's happening and when. North Yorkshire's Operation Expedite is actively targeting the drug supply across the region. When people come across this information themselves, a lot of the time they are ringing the police, they might do it anonymously, and we try as much as we can to intercept them. Seven, seven, go on. Vehicle has just activated northbound from Harrogate. 
That's got a drugs marker in it for supply. A request stop check. Suspicious. The, the driver, his West Yorkshire Intel is huge, and it's mainly all to do with dealing of heroin and crack cocaine. Yeah, that's mine, so thank you. I've got to see if there's any extra units available uh, to assist you with at the moment. I'm not sure there is. They get stopped by the police and they're going to get found in possession of Class A drugs. You're looking at going to prison, so they're willing to carry weapons. I can think of numerous times where officers have been injured um, when stopping vehicles in these kind of circumstances. So it's always in the back of your mind. A vehicle that's done uh, a number of quick turnarounds. It seems to be leaving by a particular route as well, or you know anywhere around our borders. Um, the south of the county, especially, uh, pretty bad. Thank you. I'm just going to temporarily to borrow this person's driveway. Must have got an issue. Yeah, yeah. And we've um, managed to get a few more units now as well to assist us. Hopefully, it'll come this way. This is what I like about this job. It could just sail out of the other end of Harrogate now, couldn't it? Going towards the motorway or whatever, and that's it, game over. We could literally drop on it down here and it's game on. Yeah, Chris, we're uh, coming towards you, mate. Yep, I've got sight of it. You never know, it might fail to stop, which would be interesting on these roads. Sam has got a black top. Sebastian's got a white top. If they've got anything on board, they're going to straight away be thinking about getting rid of the evidence, secreting it somewhere within the vehicle, secreting it on themselves in various ways. 77 vehicle stopped. Just come and stand around here for me, mate. You're at the minute you detained for a search, OK, in Section 23 of Mr. Struggs Act. I'm going to put some handcuffs on you. Keep your hands out of your pockets for me, mate. Just so you know where the vehicle stopped, and we've got two occupants detained for a search. Chris has been joined by a team of plainclothed officers from Operation Expedite. Hello, are you all right? You look freezing cold. I know it's awful. Couldn't be much worse weather, could it? Are you all right, though? Yeah, that's it. Is it a health thing or is it the shock of everything that's going on? I'm just a bit anxious. A bit anxious, OK. Why are you driving down here? Why are you in Harrogate? I've been for a drive. OK, and there's no other reason for you to be here? He's not protesting his innocence. My kind of instinct in that situation is you've got something to hide and um, we're going to find it. This vehicle's made two trips into the Harrogate area today and we suspect it's involved in the supply of drugs. Do you understand that? Yep. OK. Have you got anything on that you shouldn't have? Nothing whatsoever. And is there anything in the car that you shouldn't have? No. OK. We've got an audience. It's fine. Inside one in here. They could be just part of a bigger picture. They're the vulnerable people that are given a few notes and told to you take this package to that place and then drive back and ultimately if you get caught then that's on you. Do you use any drugs at all then? No. Fine, back up to get you warm. Passenger's obviously to be searched. He's saying he's not got anything on him. So both occupants are going to come back to the police station, which is only around the corner, luckily enough, see where we go from there. After an initial search of the driver and the female passenger, there's no evidence of drug dealing. He was quite clearly nervous. I knew and he knew there was an issue with us stopping him, basically. If they're secreting things down their pants, which they usually would do, we will very soon see. Coming up... In a hurt underwear. An interesting find back at the station. If they have got anything on them, if they've got things hard, we're going to know about it pretty quickly. Oh, Jesus! And after a tip-off from the public... Let's see if it comes towards us. Dan and Gav hunt for a gang of suspected poachers. They'll set the dogs out to chase and kill the hare. Your vehicle's going to be searching Section 19 at Wildlife Act to make sure that there are no game in there. To stop the flow of drugs into North Yorkshire, the force has set up Operation Expedite. There she is. 
after an intelligence-led sting on a suspected drug runner. Traffic cop Chris Dory and a team of plainclothed officers are taking the suspects to Harrogate Police Station. We believe we found a small amount of drugs in the vehicle. So far, they've only found a small quantity of cannabis, not the heroin or crack they were expecting. Yeah, positive cannabis. A man and a woman have been arrested for further searches. She's really, really nervous about really worried yeah, about her is. welfare. I think there'll be some sort of criminal exploitation element. There could be some suggestion that the female has been used to transport the drugs around and the male kind of keeps his hands clean. Okay. Uh, so she's being strip searched first. He's still sat outside. While the woman is searched, Chris oh, questions hey. the driver. Right. Is he in the back of here? Yeah. He says I'm going to do with you is for drugs. OK, do you use any drugs? I'm off a little bit of weed. A little bit last night. Yeah. Hold your tongue out as far as you can. And I'm just going to wipe this across your tongue. Just keep your tongue where it is, OK? That's yeah. fine. Thank you very much for that. Yeah, this is the cannabis line. This is the cocaine line. And I'd say at the minute there is um, a line developing on the cannabis side. So it's, then it's looking like the driver will also be arrested for drug driving. I just need to let you know that you're further under arrest, OK, because the, the drug flight's come back positive for cannabis. So I'm further arresting you on suspicion of driving a motor vehicle whilst over the specified limit for a drug. And you're still under caution, all right. We'll do, well, that's, that's what we're going to do in, in relation to that offence, all right. So we'll just take you to the nurse and we'll go through that. Go ahead. Excellent. In her underwear. Cracking. Perfect, thank you, mate. Found uh, what they're saying is a significant amount of Class A drugs um, within the female's underwear. So, um, yeah, just about to bring that out now and we'll have a look at it and see what we've got. People that do this know that it is a risk, and we do get mountains of intelligence, and we're going to look at stopping them and searching them, and if they have got anything to hide, we're going to know about it pretty quickly. All oh, right, yeah. There's hundreds of items in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot in there. There's quite a lot. There's in a there. lot because the crack, the crack will be 0.1 gram deals. So there's a bundle of crack there. You see that there'd be 50, 60 items in one of those alone. So I'd say there's in excess of 100 wraps total. Street value, uh, tenner a wrap. So there'd be in excess of a thousand pounds for class A. Decent little amount. Yeah. Good though, isn't it? Across North Yorkshire. It's not just police cameras and intelligence that alert the traffic cops to suspects on the move. Right, I've got three names, so you you let me know what you know and I can put that into decisive action, all right? Tip-offs from the public are also vital. I'm glad you're using your mirrors there, buddy. On the southern edge of the county, 20 miles west of Leeds, Traffic cops Dan and Gab are back on duty. Anyone out and about in the Selby area, obviously, from a vehicle. It's, um, possible poachers that have been out. A member of the public has alerted control to some suspected poachers. A uh, Subaru Forester is involved in hair coursing two dogs in the vehicle. 2 1, we're in Selby. Are you going to put it on our hot list? Already doing it. Fantastic, we'll make his way out. Senior. Subaru Forest, this is a silver estate. Great, let's see if it comes towards us. We get a load of travelling criminals coming in with dogs in older off road vehicles and sneaking about and going on to a farmer's um, property. The Subaru is heading westbound towards the A1. Yeah, received. We're just there now and we're heading towards A1. A police camera has been triggered by the suspect's silver Subaru, providing its location and direction of travel. We've had two reports now that it's been involved in possible poaching. But it seems like it's getting too spooked, so it's going, isn't it? Out to area. It had about three minutes on us. And it's just gone. Oh, it's just pinged just up go on. now. It's just here. Subaru Forest, this is a silver estate. Just behind it then, aren't we? Yeah. 
We don't know who's in that car. We don't know what they're capable of doing, and we don't know their intent. But it could end up with firearms, knives. He's got dogs in there. We don't know the temperament of those dogs. Just yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's yeah, coming to a stop. Yes, it is. Come on, Turn the engine off, mate. Take keys out. Yeah, What's the nature of the journey today? Because we've had two reports regarding your vehicle involved in possible poaching. Yeah. Where are you from? Darlington. Do you have a license? Yeah. Why is it taxed? It's no excuse if you don't have tax on it. I've had a chance to tax it. Yeah, you have had a chance to tax it because you're driving it. You've had enough time to drive down there, one from Durham, haven't you? And coming to North Yorkshire area, so you've had enough chance to tax it. You ever been arrested before? Yeah. Yeah, your vehicle's going to get a check over. Yeah. Okay. Just whip your hood down, mate, and look at me. You're not known to us on uh, photograph and you're linked to poaching, so as we know who it is next time we come across people, we can link it. All right? Just have a look at me. Whose are the dogs? One's yours. We just need you to get them out of the boot, okay, so that and put them on a lead, because your vehicle's going to be searching Section 19 at the Wildlife Act to make sure that there are no rabbits or anything in there. All right. It's a lovely countryside to walk the dogs anyway. Yeah. But we don't want them running onto the road. Air Carson's one example of what they'll do. They'll normally take some dogs with them and they'll set the dogs out to chase and kill the hare. But when you're just going out just to harm an animal just for, you know, just for fun, uh, to me, it's just brutal. Black market betting has led to a surge in illegal hare coursing with poachers live streaming events nationwide using mobile phones. It becomes very difficult to prove if somebody's been poaching. We've just got to look at it as a bit of a cat and mouse game. We won't stop going after them. Uh, we won't stop taking the cars off them. But ultimately, it's just going to be a matter of trying to disrupt them as much as possible when we can and where we can. No, it's going to be taking it off you. All right. If you don't get it back within um, seven to 14 days, um, it'll be either crushed or sold, all right? Just watch the road, mate, with dog, all right? Other offences that are linked in with poaching are uh, theft, burglary. As they're accessing farmers' lands, they're getting access to see what's there, and if they see the opportunity, they tend to take it. I don't know how far they're going to get in this. Is it on fumes? Yeah. There's <laughs> no in it. That would have been the shortest felt to stop if he had done. In fact, it's, it looks like it's completely run out. <laughs> that alarm's going off. There's no fuel in it at all. That's probably the reason why he didn't make off. <laughs> He's got previous felt to stop, hasn't he? So that was probably the reason why. It was unfortunate for him that he's decided not to put any fuel in his car, so he's given up the ghost purely and simply because he wouldn't have got very far. He might have got half a mile down the road and then he'd have to give up. You've been a search trained officer, haven't you? Yeah. You need your fine skills. You see, it's either Tinky Winky, Dipsy, La La or Poe, innit? I just don't know which one. Uh, the car had some dogs in the boot. There was nothing obvious to suggest that there was any uh, game in there. We won't just pull any, any random car over because they've got dogs in. So we base it on information or intelligence that we've received. They've travelled down from the northeast. If I'm going to walk my dog, I'm not going to travel 30, 40, or 50 miles just to walk my dogs. By getting it off the road for just a simple offence such as no tax and seizing it, disrupts him. Might be only for a day. So getting his car off him just for 24 hours might be. A bit of a godsend for some people. From tracking wanted criminals to cross-border drug supply, tech and intel have become crucial tools for the traffic cops. Criminals travelling through our area, we only have a very short window in which to capture them. As soon as we get the heads up that there's a vehicle coming into our area, we, we want to act on it as soon as possible. We've got the tactical advantage of using various different bits of technology available to us. Criminality, it's more challenging day by day because as, as we look at new techniques to challenge them, 
they then come up with new ideas, but we've got to keep working hard to make sure we're one step ahead. We're able to do more checks in relation to vehicles, to be able to anticipate what vehicles are going to do. Um, it shows them that we are out there looking, we are acting on intelligence, and we're actively going after them. In this episode... Yeah, a quite large quantity of drugs. After his arrest, the Albanian man caught with cannabis worth over £100,000... ID card? Even that smells of cannabis? ..was remanded in custody by Cleveland police. A Crown Court trial has been adjourned while the police further their inquiries. Get that beat unit out the ball. Reinforce it. The investigation into the stolen van on cloned plates. It was stolen in a burglary in South Yorkshire. ..is ongoing, but the man caught driving it with his two children on board has been sentenced to 12 weeks in prison and has been disqualified from driving and banned for 23 months. You are wanted, all right? You are wanted by the police for an assault. Derbyshire police are investigating the male arrested on the A1... Right. ..who was wanted for allegedly making threats to kill. He has been released under investigation. But the minute you detain for a search, OK, in Section 23 of Mr. Shrugs Are you all right, though? Yeah, that's it. The couple arrested near Harrogate Police Station, who police suspect were transporting Class A drugs into the county... ..in a her underwear... ..have been released under investigation. The man may also be facing prosecution for driving without insurance and no licence and obstructing a police officer in their execution of duty. Turn the engine off, mate, take keys out. Why is it taxed? And the driver of the car carrying suspected poachers and their dogs was fined £80. I've got two reports again in your vehicle involved in possible poaching. The car has since been reported. Through previous for drugs. A Peugeot, uh, silver Peugeot. Early Friday morning, at the start of a bank holiday weekend for the traffic cops. Now I've authorised tactics on the vehicle. The preferred tactic at this time is a box. That's with a stinger. Yeah, that's us in uh, just heading to Scarborough, also uh, on Stepney Road, uh, double crewed IPB unit. Traffic cops Pete Allison and Matt Harvey are on the hunt for a car that's driven at a police officer and failed to stop. At, at this time, the driver could well be under the influence of drink or drugs. We have received information that there is a marker on that car linked to drugs. Does that mean the driver is automatically under the influence of drugs? Perhaps not, but putting two and two together, that's probably the, uh, the reasonable assumption at this point. Coming in on a bank holiday is a bit like what we say when we're coming to do a night shift and it's a full moon. You can more or less guarantee there's going to be extra work. Ten miles away, an unmarked police car spots the Peugeot. Matt, Pete and the other traffic cars race to join the pursuit. Next left. We need some stingers in front of us, don't we? Yes, this all of a sudden has been notched up a level. Here we have a unknown driver in a car in the early hours of the morning who has driven at a police officer. Two seven will be angry. Why is someone making that decision? They're either intoxicated by a drink or drugs. Is it some criminality going on? We don't know. We need to be finding and stopping the driver. There's something not right there. We hear on the radio that this car is in the same street that we're on. We know we're not behind it, so this thing has to be coming towards us. We're now the third car in this pursuit. We're constantly thinking about how we can safely bring this to an end and position other resources. There's no point just driving round after this car. Ron, you're going to need to push over to 
Yeah. One of our colleagues uh, positions himself further up, up the road and thankfully the car turns left towards the stinger. We're going sort of 80, 90, 95 mile an hour in a 30. Absolutely reckless driving. may appeal that we've gone in hard, but we need to get that driver out of that vehicle and detained. It was only a matter of hours ago that they'd made a decision to drive at offices. It's scared to death, will you please let me see the dog? The dog is fine. It, will you please take him home? He's my friend's dog. To my absolute amazement, it's a female driver. From a cop's point of view, we would expect that to be a male or a group of males driving that vehicle. We do deal with female drivers in these situations, but it's rare. Right, so listen to me. Yeah. So you're under arrest for dangerous driving and failed to stop the police. You don't have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you don't mention one question, oh, yeah, yeah. something which you relate to will only cut. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. Do you understand? Yeah, but we can you see, can you see my dog, please? It's my friend's dog. Can you please let me see the dog? The dog's absolutely go. fine. It's just sat in the back of the yeah, car. He'll be terrified. He's shaking already. Please, can I see the dog? I'm not going to go anywhere, am I? You can sit up. Right, Please, turn around. see him. Ah, why are you twisting me? I'm You're not. Don't worry. Stay there. Stay there. Stay there. Your dog's there. Yeah, but can you please stay there. see him? All she seemed to be going about was the welfare of the dog, which was in the car. Was she thinking that when she was driving at 90 mile an hour through the street? I'm not too sure. Let me see the, the dog. dog is fine. Right, please, can you get the owner of the dog on the phone? We'll sort that. There's a lot of gear in there, isn't there? Wow. Poor little lad. Got a poo on back, back seat. It's a lovely dog, that. Beautiful. I've got anything on you that's going to harm me or harm you. No, no, but, like, right, the number is in my phone. Can you please read it? You're not listening to me about the dog. Because of the man you're driving, I'm going to require you to provide me a specimen of breath for analysis. Yeah, that's fine. What, when was the last time you had anything to drink? Have you seen me just have a drink, then? What's, what's in the bottle there? Wine. Have you seen me just, as you put, as I pulled over, you see me grab the bottle, didn't you, and drink it? If someone has a drink, we have to wait 20 minutes before we can do the roadside procedure. So she's bought herself 20 minutes, but that's all she's bought herself. Have you had anything else? Any drugs? No. Do you use drugs? Yeah. What do you use? Cannabis. I shall go and get my uh, test, then we can do that with you. So she's been locked up currently for felt stop and I just drive him. Yeah. Uh, she was drinking out the bottle there, so we have to wait for that, so I'm going to do a drug a drugs test. She is a user of cannabis. In the back of the car was a, uh, a beagle. 
dog, uh, only a young beagle dog, and this vehicle's been driven at very high speed, it's been driven erratically, it's been driven dangerously. PC Mike Rowan checks on the puppy. Apart from being very shaken, uh, it doesn't seem to have that many bad injuries apart from some trauma to its right eye. Uh, there's a what looks like a blood blister to its eye. I don't know whether that's historic, so uh, the dog's on its way to the vets just to uh, get checked over. If it's found that it's historic and uh, this lady hasn't done anything to treat it, uh, then we'll be having some uh, words with her uh, once she's sobered up to uh, ask her why she, why she caused such unnecessary suffering to a dog. Because of your manner of driving and because you're admitting you're a cannabis user, I'm going to require you to pro provide me a sample of saliva. Right there. I'm not bothered, I just want to see that dog. Can you see the dog? Hmm? Can you see the dog? Listen, I mean, you had your chance to look after your dog, didn't you, before you were driving around like a, like a bloody dog. woman yeah, possessed around the bloody town? I wanted to get away from you to well, we look that. after that dog. You wanted to get away from us to look after the dog? How does that work? Because I know I'd get nicked. The dog's fine. A vet's been called for the dog. Vet? Why? Right. Because we have to put it somewhere safe, don't we? We're just going to look after it. The roadside test, uh, despite saying that she'd been smoking cannabis, didn't actually show any trace for cannabis. But what it did do, it showed a positive reading for cocaine. Uh, section 4, uh, which is unfit through drink or drugs, and you've also provided a positive sample of cocaine at the roadside, so you are under arrest for Section 5A as well. All right? Right, we'll see you down at Custom. This all started because she drove her vehicle at a police officer. Thankfully, he has escaped injury, but that could have gone seriously wrong. She could be looking at far worse offences than that. I mean, he could have easily been seriously injured or killed. What have you got to say about the dog situation? I've already Why told you. Why can't you just bring the dog here so I can see that it's OK and he can see me and see that everything's OK? The dog's perfectly fine. We've had a, a, a positive resolution to this in as much as uh, minor injury to a couple of cars uh, and she's she's now in custody. That's probably the best result that we can expect for something like this. You haven't got a clue about what's going on in my life. So don't even go there. Coming up. So you're overtaking through all the cross hatchings, dust and stones everywhere. Anger by the roadside. These two policemen are out to catch a motorcyclist. You yeah, keep talking and we can take your licence off you. She's obviously been to some kind of party because she's got the little hula hula thing on her neck. And more bank holiday mayhem. Two walking and one trapped. I'm just going to go and see what they've got to say for themselves. On bank holiday weekends, the Yorkshire Dales are a magnet for tourists, with up to 4.2 million day trippers a year heading for the hills. This kid's lycra is incredibly thin. That is not what you need, is it? It's just offensive. Outraging public decency. Oh, no. <laughs> Traffic cop Sergeant Pete Stringer and PC Kyle McBride are in the Yorkshire Dales for Operation Boundary, cracking down on bank holiday motoring offences. The whole county changes on a, on a bank holiday weekend. You get every kind of possible road user that you could imagine, from your, your pedal cyclists through to motorcyclists that may want to use it as their personal racetrack, through to caravans. Just everything is happening, everything is busy, and it's just the, the sheer lack of consideration amongst all the road users for other people. The reason we're stopping you is because of your ridiculously small number plate. I've left my um, picture plate on. Please don't act all surprised, I've been doing this too long. The games we play. That's the correct size, the correct font, the correct colour. Obviously, you've left the film on there, that needs to come off. These need to come off because they're offensive. The biggest demand every bank holiday weekend throughout the summer months is always motorcycles. 1% of road users are motorcyclists, but then they make up to um, 30 plus percent of the fatalities or the seriously injured statistics. Ooh. So our aim today is, is to try and keep people alive. 
you know, if we can get hold of that first motorcycle that's riding antisocially, uh, maybe send them back home with the tail between the legs, they might pass that message on. Any idea why I might have stood here talking to you? You did, mate, yeah. Simple as that. Yeah, you get it. Yeah. No worries, mate. I'll have you on your way very shortly. But it's also only right that we deal with people on four wheels that are committing the same offences as those on two. Is your licence clean and full at the moment? Three points. What are your three points for? Speeding. Well, guess guess what the outcome's going to be this time. Do you want to have a guess? Well, no. Well, I could ban you if you want, but I was thinking I was thinking another three points for speeding, yeah? It's not about persecuting motorcyclists at all. It's about trying to make the road safer for everybody to get around. This is the one that we saw, because obviously it's supposed to be that sort of colour. It's both from an enforcement point of view. Is it going to get pinged by safety camera vans? And secondly, Kyle, are you going to be long? Because he can have a ticket for that. Whilst it may seem relatively small and insignificant to be prosecuted for your number plate or your exhaust being too loud. You beeped at me. Why? Sorry, I would. Well, it's going to cost you. Yeah. yeah. Later on, that person fixes that defect. They're more likely to be compliant with the other laws of the road. So a little thing leads on to bigger things. An hour into the operation, the officers spot a speeding rider. That's definitely going for some. since the 11th of April this month. Right. So before we go any further, I'm going to caution you. Yeah. You don't have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention when questioned something which you later align in court. Okay. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. Yeah. Any idea why we might be stopping talking to you? That's one. Exhaust. Two. Keep going. Speed. Right. Absolutely screaming up the road. Yeah. It's a 50. Do you know how fast you were going? No, no. Well, we had to do 100 just to keep up with you. Okay. All right. So, yeah, full house. It's the first time we've been out since right. December. Like, and I, I should have checked. It's my fault. It's my yeah, fault. yeah. I'm not, I'm not... So what are you intending to do now, bear in mind? Turning back and going back. If I knew, Good genuine, I wouldn't have been out on it. 100%, I didn't know. Straight home. Yeah, absolutely. All right. No worries. Thank you guys. The rider is reported for a number of offences. Oh. But as Pete and Kyle pull away, they spot another biker. motorcycle in front that was doing 70 and a 50 um, just as we came around the corner as you can see it's uh, solid white um, and he's overtaken a VW Polo contravening the solid white light system yeah he's obviously not paying any attention um, because at the moment he's uh, not stopping currently failing to stop I haven't seen him look in his mirrors once, but the sirens and... Uh... Yeah, we're continuing 7-0. We've already been wrong side of double whites. Get off the bike! Get, Get off! off. 
593 vehicle stopped. Before we go any further, you're cautioned, OK? You don't have to say anything, but it may harm your defence. Just listen to me. Yes. You do not have to say anything, but it may have harm your defence. You're not mentioned one question. Something which in court. Anything you say may be in Evans. I've been trying for miles to stop you. Why haven't you stopped? Before you get yourself arrested, why did you not stop? I haven't seen you. Why didn't you see me? Because I've been looking in your eyes. So you're admitting due care to me, is that what you're saying? No, I'm not admitting due care. Take your helmet off. Before. Take your helmet off. What I'm bothered about is the manner of your riding, yeah? I don't think I was riding at all. You're doing 17 of 50 in the Lancashire bit. You then come into North Yorkshire and overtake on solid white lines. That's offence number two. Yeah, okay. I've informed my control room that I've got a motorcycle failing to stop because I'm sat behind you with my blues and twos on for miles. Do you want to continue this conversation at custody? No, thank you. Are you known to the police? I'm not known to the police, no. So why aren't you checking your mirrors like a careful and competent rider? Because I just set off on a nice ride, it was a nice day. And I... Right. Sorry. And you're exempt from the law because? Look, I've done something wrong. Mm -hmm. I accept that. Please. Well, you've committed three offences, yeah? Please take whatever action you're going to do. Okay. okay, well, we will do. Well, I'll admit that is your you're taking over a white line. Which is but against the law. It is against the law. You're right. I had a good visual sight. You were, you were also... No, 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 no. It it's against the law. Okay. So what about the speeding? You are also speeding. I thought it was 60 mile an hour. It's an A road, 60 this mile This is 60. Hour. Back where you overtook was a 50. Well, I'm sorry, the, the speed... I, right. I again, it was a 50. again, following on from that, we've then followed you for some time, blue lights and sirens. We've been trying to get your attention by moving left and right behind you. Have We've I, been sounding I the horn. I've had my music on. Right. But I've you're still supposed to be able home. to hear what's going on around you, I aren't you? Be able to hear because you other, the otherwise. Noise of the motorbike. Right. You can hear over the sound of the engine. It's I think by the real aim the speed of this is these two policemen are out to catch a motorbike motorcyclist. You're entitled to your opinion. You two got out of that vehicle was so aggressive because you'd failed me. you'd failed to you. stop you'd failed to stop i ran over to you i commanded you to turn the bike off if and i took the keys out face, I'd have thought I'd have shot someone. we haven't made any comment on who you are the as a person you got out of the car you thought i was some nasty we, criminal we'd followed. To get away with no insurance but how do i know it. how do i know how do I know who you are until we've got you stopped? The who, fact that you who, failed to stop. Whoever for you police. approach as a policeman, you should not do right. it in that angry, right. nasty attitude. I want you to listen to me, please. I'm listening. What we're doing today is trying to keep the roads safe for everybody. The roads are going to be busy, and okay? You... Whether you're on to listen to me, and then you can have your say. If you keep interrupting me, it's going to take us a lot longer, isn't okay, it? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So I'm patrolling one of the roads where statistically we have most accidents with motorcycles, yeah. okay? That lad that we were at that junction when you we're came past us. We're going to have another if we don't bring it. But again, it's your fault that we stopped here, yeah? It'd be your fault if no, it's it an accident. No, it won't. be yours. So, we're dealing with that other motorbike that was doing best five 100 with three fences. It's going to be my fault. So you're not going to listen to me? OK. You'll get, your pa you'll get your paper to the post. I'm not going to talk over you. You're reporting for failing to stop for police, excess speed, contravening double white lines, and obviously for failing to stop. Sorry, officer, That's but your I've fault. not seen you. Right. But if you're going to let me talk, I'm trying to save people's lives today. That is why I'm here. Putting people's lives in danger. Well, driving at excess speed, yes. Contravening oh, solid white line system. Speed. Yeah, we're getting towards dangerous right, riding, aren't we? Right, you yeah, keep I talking did. and we can take your licence off you. Yeah. I did that, yeah. Yeah, you did. OK. Any further questions? No. You'll receive a summons through the post. I look forward to seeing you at the Magistrate's Court. OK, thank you very much. Please don't ride like that again. I think what a lot of people don't realise that being allowed to use the roads is a, is an entitlement rather than a than a given right. Up 16 foot. You need to make sure that you've got your attention focused at all times on what you're doing so that you don't kill or seriously injure yourself or somebody else. You know, your life can change literally in the blink of an eye. Just the whole manner of his riding, even his attitude when he had eventually been stopped by us, couldn't hear you, couldn't see you. Well, a careful and competent rider would be checking the mirrors very frequently. Clearly, he could have heard the siren if he'd actually bothered listening. He could have seen us in his mirrors. He just couldn't be bothered. My whole reason for going to work over the bank holiday weekend was to, to simply try and keep people alive. If by clamping down on the smaller things impacted on how they rode later on, then that was job done to me. Coming up. Two vehicle collision. A head-on smash. So this is locked up? 
that, that hasn't been driven. After a boozy weekend partying. The lad in the back, he's well oiled. He reeks a drink. And the girl in the front passenger seat, she's had a good skinful as well. Getting a report of a two vehicle RCC. One person is injured. Other vehicle unknown. We have got an ambulance heading towards. Oscar 4-2 update. Yeah, two vehicle collision. Still awaiting a pleasure guard injuries. 4-2 safe. Should be just up here and left. In North Yorkshire, traffic cop Sergeant Julian Pearson is well into his bank holiday shift. I don't look forward to working bank holidays because. It's going to be busy. There's probably going to be a serious collision and you're going to have drink and drugs. It's going to be somebody local. We need to confirm. Yeah. Information I've received on the radio is that two vehicles have had a collision. The driver of a Suzuki has run off. So straight away you're thinking there's drink involved, there's drugs involved, there's criminality involved, and there's a runner from a car. So you want to get there as quickly as you can because you want to apprehend the individual that might have crashed into an innocent member of the public. I can't this one out, Who's the car come back to then? This is back to the local lad. Yeah. It's locked up. Right. Uh, I've got a lady in the club and with uh, pelvic injury. Right. And there's a grass <coughs> behind the car. Right. If you leave her with us, do you want to scoot round there and see if he's gone? Because he's probably gone home, hasn't he? They say this is locked up. That's locked. They've apparently locked up. And what's she saying? To be honest, she's in that much pain at the moment, she's complaining of pelvic injury. Because when it's like concern is, that's quite cold. Yeah, I'm wondering if that's been parked. And oh, she's hit it? Yeah, that's what... Ah, uh, right. Dry, there's a dry patch behind her. Yeah, because that, that, that hasn't been driven, that. The discs are quite cold. So I wonder if she, she's hit that patch up. Yeah. Yeah. Right, that, that's it. Yeah, so, so, so nobody's legged it, have they? So it didn't take a lot to work out what had happened, which then meant we could scale back what we were going to do, because we weren't looking for a runner from a car, we were looking for the one person that was still in their car. Yeah, she's, she's driven into it, haven't she? Are the lady with her? We'll go and knock the lad who's car goes. Sorry, sir. Yeah, I, I, that's been stationary, that's, that's been unattended, that, because it's clapped cold. Has any, any spells? I can't tell, simply because of the two. Right, okay. The lad in the back, he's well oiled and he, he, he reeks a drink. And the girl in the front passenger said she's had a good skinful as well. So the, the smells are strong. Got you. With this individual, it was very clear that they were intoxicated. You could tell. You could smell it. But you've also got to consider, is there a medical episode going on that sometimes might display symptoms of intoxication or other things are going on? I think she's smashed. She's just smashed, isn't she? <laughs> we'll have to breathalyse oh, her, yeah. I think. Yeah. yeah. She's just hit it. Because she's obviously been to some kind of party, hasn't she? Because she's got the little hula hula thing around her neck. Uh, no, there was no runner. Um, it's somebody who's had a few too many sherbets that's um, driven into a parked car and shunted it 50 yards. So as equal as parts as it should be on the side of the road, she's hit it, as you can see, with some considerable force that's forced it from there to there, um, which would suggest she's either planted a foot on it as an auto and launched it, and she's either just setting off or she's just coming home because she lives there and the person she's hit lives next door but one. Good morning, Can you tell me what's happened? Just going to jump over to the side, Lord. Look, 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 what do you think? She's just got a broken rib. Only stunts, sir? Yeah, nothing. Um, I don't think she's got any injuries at all. Yeah. 
Well, the, the stories swapped and changed. So when I was in the car with her, it went from that side to that side to there, to back to there. That was the first thing. Yeah. Drunk. Uh, oh, and, too. And, and, and intoxicated. Yeah. On the back, she's told us that she's had this pain for like one week, two weeks. Right. So we had to be quite firm with her to try to, uh, to try to ascertain what pain is new tonight. And the stories changing it's, it's, it's not consistent put it that way she had no real comprehension of what she'd done and was giving the paramedic quite a hard time she said this is a grand's car and, uh, and she lives at, with a grand does she yeah live at the same address don't they you're frustrated but you've got and probably angry is, is probably the right word because ultimately she has made a conscious decision to get into a car that doesn't even belong to her, that belongs to her grandma, and drive from a party, not round the corner, from another town, back to her home address. Yeah, I took a picture. So we've just done a breathalyzer sample in the back of the ambulance, which has failed. So it's 102 reading, which is way over the limit. She explained to me there, she had three glasses of wine prior to coming out. So yeah, she was ultimately under arrest. Um, due to injury, she's going to go to hospital. So, yeah, that's fine. Not impressed no at all. The driver is nearly three times over the limit. This fine specimen's blown 102 roadside. I'm not going to try and start it. It's highly likely the insurance company won't pay out. They'll pay out for that car, but they won't pay for that one because she's obviously you can't be covered, can you, if you're driving illegally. So, this individual has probably written a grandma's car off and written a neighbor's car off and all of that is a conscious act you know when she had options available to her, such as taxi stop at somebody's house instead of coming home all of it was preventable and it just didn't need to happen she's now taking up space at hospital which is completely unnecessary all because she chose to go out and booze and not pay probably 20 quid to get a taxi home I have no sympathy at all and, and she's voluntarily putting herself into a hospital situation where they're already stretched and they don't need people like her in there. So whatever's going on in her life doesn't excuse what she's done tonight. It's just so utterly selfish. I know the impact that people like her have on society. It just destroys lives and it is not acceptable. Coming up... I thought there was two walking and one trapped. Another holiday weekend smash. Uh, as far as I know, there's only two patients. So Absolutely. who's trapped? And the flying biker takes a tumble. The road that it's on, I'd be surprised if it's only 15 foot. Over the bank holiday, there is a 20% rise in road collisions. Any second now, we should be here. And with record numbers of visitors coming to the Yorkshire Dales, it's a busy time for traffic cops like Emma Wallace. Yeah, we've come in to a village. Whereabouts are you? Time for that. we should be with you shortly. We are going to a collision two vehicles involved, two walking wounded and one person is allegedly trapped in uh, in one of the cars. I thought to eight myself from 15, 10, state six. There aren't many days go by when there's not a need for us to go to collisions. <sighs> Oopsie. When you get certain calls, your brain starts ticking over the, the what-ifs and what you might need and how might it play out. I'm your first driver in the first vehicle is the one that's more injured than anyone else. But I'm not concerned over anything major. They've both been out and walking. Right. I thought there was two walking and one trapped. Uh, as far as I know, there's only two patients. I've so who's me. trapped? No one's trapped. The initial call was that the van driver was trapped. Just hadn't just, got out. It was just hadn't got out. 
Right. Hokey spokey. Um, so, um, so you're not. You've got no concerns. No major concerns. No. Um, Do you want to breathalyse and we'll sort out recovery and I'll take some photos. Is that all right? Yeah. From the paramedic on scene. Um, we have one casualty who has some bruising and the other one may have a, uh, a break to the hand, but that's uh, yet to be determined. Um, both were walking wounded. There is nobody trapped. I'm just going to go and see what they've got to say for themselves. Are you my van driver? Hiya. Yeah. What happened? The lady from the van is basically saying she's seen something, I believe possibly a pheasant, coming to run out in front of her, at which point she's swerved. And then she's looked up and seen the other vehicle swerving. So whether the other vehicle has been swerving to avoid the same pheasant or whether the other vehicle has been swerving okay. to avoid the van that swerved onto her side of the road, yet to be decided. One of my colleagues is just going to come and breathalyse you. Yeah. I understand you might be going to hospital, but uh, we can catch up with you later because ultimately getting you to hospital's main thing. We'll sort your car out. Swerve for a pheasant. Right. Pheasants may cause some damage, not that much. The breath test is negative, but an investigation will have to wait as there's another urgent call. Renault 72. Sticky reports of a bump up at Castleton area. Appreciate it's the way out if you start making. It's come to us from the ambulance that a motorcyclist is a party company with his vehicle. It's come in from ambulance. Single vehicle, serious injury collision, uh, and basically he is said to have gone off the road, off a fifth and down a, a 15 foot drop. And the road that it's on, I'll be surprised if it's only 15 foot. North Yorkshire is very popular for motorcyclists. We've got some gorgeous, long, windy, open roads that just lend themselves nicely to being on a motorbike. But um, motorbikers are a very vulnerable road user. If they get knocked off, we are more likely to be looking at serious injury. Far time going to state six. Right. Hi. Hiya. How are we doing? Yeah. Oh, yes. So when I see a biker that's 15 foot down an embankment, the drop off down the embankment, it's a hell of a drop for anybody. I'm trying to locate where I can get down the bit of, the, of an embankment to, to where he is. Has he come off here? Has he come off a bit further up? In which case, it's been even more of a, a drop for him. But, um, you know, he's, he's there, he's, he's conscious, he's breathing, he's communicating, which is good. Let me just update my control room that you're conscious and breathing. Apologies, yeah. comms are a bit poor here. Yeah. He's conscious yeah, yeah, and breathing. Yeah. He's complaining uh, of back pain, but ambulance are on route. He's just, he's just, on, um, he's just on the phone to him. Just whilst he's on the phone to ambulance, were you in front or behind no, him? He's been there now. And from your perspective, what's happened? Uh, he he come up the hill, and I think he just weren't expecting where, where to the corner, oh, um, right. and he'd braked, and obviously it's on knobbly tyres, so he just skidded, yeah. and he yeah, yeah. hit the gravel. He's gone. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so have you been going uh, that way? Yeah, we'd come up this way, yeah. Uh... Right. Okay. With no ambulances available on a busy bank holiday, a paramedic checks on the patient by phone. Can you do that from your neck to your neck to your, uh, to your waistline? And if you can see it, there's any pain down that, down the, uh, back. No, I don't feel no pain on that. I'm not going any lower. <laughs> <laughs> you know, do you have any tingling sensations in your legs at all? No, 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 that's fine. You, your legs feel, you know, your legs feel, don't they feel numb at all? No, I've had a lot of nettles. Yeah. Go ahead, stand up. Yeah, roll on tall thoughts for me, to be nice and slowly. Did you have the wall? Use the wall to me. Then do one, do one leg at a time. When you're on all fours, do one leg at a time. And try and just put yourself to your feet for a minute. Oh. How's that? It's all right, yeah. Yeah, he's up now. <laughs> Lovely, how's you feeling? Uh, all right, apart from just a little bit winded. I'm most surprised to be fair. And how's the bike looking? 
I have no idea. It's it's all right. There's just a couple of crap pieces of plastic, nothing major. Okay. And how fast would you think you were going when you come off your bike? Seen 30 or 40 or something, I don't know. Oh, 40, 45, yeah, something like that. Are you feeling a bit. Yeah. Are you queasy or, or, or dizzy or. <laughs> Getting too old. Uh... Is it. Yeah, it's. it's, it's Do you want to just. Funny. <laughs> just balance yourself against there. Balance yourself against there, you'll be fine. <laughs> Ready? Yeah. Anything else down there? Um, I'll need a brisket at some point if you can bring one, bring one down. Ultimately, first off is the biker's welfare, and then I can sort out what I need to sort out once he's dealt with, because his medical needs are are the priority. So, other than battered and bruised, and he feeling worse as time goes on? He says he feels better. Yeah. He feel he feels better now. Right, all I need you to do is take a deep breath, seal the lips tight around the shape, it's just a steady blow until you hear it click. It's about five seconds long. That's it. That should come back zero because I've had tough it today. Yeah, that's come back as zero, that's what we like. Right, oh, doing all right in a minute, we've got to get you out of here next. You wanted me to do that in, didn't you then? Like the hat, off the edge. Yeah. If we go around there, where there's a public right. footpath, how's that look? You don't need to carry your bag or anything. We came up the hill and then he went to brake and back wheel just locked up and he just slid all the way. The bike got stuck on that little bush there and he fell down. Set up for hours. Oof. A friend is on the way to take the biker to hospital. Good to go? Yeah. yeah. You can hang around with him? Yeah, I will do. Yeah. yeah. So just. Make sure you do go to hospital. I know you might feel a bit better later on. You just, you've obviously taken a big tumble down there, even if you, you know, you're back. You're going to be massively winded yeah, you're as well. Yeah, you're quite a guy. Just, just get checked out, just to be safe. You're on know, the safe side. Yeah. No worries. Thank you. All right, take it easy. See you later. I think the one thing to take away from that is that lad needs to put some lottery numbers on. He has been incredibly lucky. He's been very fortunate to miss the massive tree stump that was there. That could have been very different. So um, it's been very lucky. In this episode, the driver who failed to stop with her friend's dog in the car in Scarborough has been ordered to court for assault on an emergency worker, failing to stop dangerous and drug driving, no licence and no insurance. About the dog. No action was taken for failing to provide and supply of Class A drugs or animal cruelty. <laughs> the drunk party-goer who crashed into a parked car was released from hospital later that morning. So it's 102 reading, which is way over the limit. She's been charged with drink driving and is due to appear in court. On a bank holiday, we want people to enjoy themselves, we want people to have fun, but there's a line, and that line has to be, if you're taking drugs or, or drinking, you shouldn't be driving afterwards. Because we know what's going to happen, there is only likely to be one outcome, and it's never pretty. Some people make it home, and some people don't, and they'll either fall off the road, run somebody over, hit something, and we have to come along with the ambulance service and pick up the pieces. The reason we're stopping you is because of your ridiculously small number plate. Operation Boundary resulted in over 100 motorists prosecuted for a variety of offences, including no tax, speeding, failing to stop, and drink and drug driving. The bloody hell are you doing? What do you think they were doing Get that? off the bike. Get off. The irate biker was summoned to court for crossing double white lines, speeding, and failing to stop. I've been trying for miles to stop you. Why haven't you stopped? He's pleaded not guilty, and the case against him was dropped due to evidential difficulties. No MOT since the 11th of April, this one. The other rider has also been reported to court for no MOT, displaying an incorrect registration plate, using a loud exhaust. Absolutely screaming up the road. Yeah. 
and speeding. Zero tolerance, they all got dealt with. You know, it's a personal ambition to, to try and save lives, to make sure that nobody else unnecessarily suffers or that I have to knock on a, another loved one's door and tell them that unfortunately, you know, their husband, wife, daughter isn't, isn't coming home again. I'm trying to save people's lives today. That is why I'm here. There were no fatalities throughout the bank holiday. He's emergency. He has got a thought from his smart cat. Vehicle stop. Get off, get off. Give me your hands. On the floor now! North Yorkshire's traffic cops. Crash, 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 crash. 140 mile an hour. How stupid are you? Driving down crime in England's largest county. Not lie to me. Stone, stone, stone. Across 3,000 square miles. Your vehicle's been stolen. Fire and ambulance heading towards. Deep. How long ago was it stolen? Uh, two minutes ago. But the alarm never went off, it is alarm, so I don't know that they've got in. Right, OK. After a number of burglaries overnight, officers are on alert for a gang of suspected thieves in a stolen transit van. Police emergency. Good morning, sir. Uh, I'd like to report a, a break-in, a robbery, during the night. Three street cameras on the area. It's our cabins that have been broken into and the... Uh, the grass cutting machinery has been, not all of it's gone, but quite a bit right, of it's okay. gone. OK, all right. Brand new okay. electrical spinners, an electrical uh, leaf blower, and then they've taken some diesel as well. <clears throat> and how much diesel's been taken? I would say about 100 litres. Right. They've taken a wood chip probably value of about £6,000. OK. Um, any witnesses? Anything heard? No. No. OK. Sorry you've had to report this. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Bye now. Bye. Bye now. Bye. Earlier, the three suspects are believed to have stolen more property and driven head-on at one of their victims. Oscar Romeo 43, though, we're going to do a vehicle check. 25 miles northeast of York, traffic cop Mark Patterson spots a suspicious van towing a trailer. We're just approaching the humpback bridge. Just approaching the junction. Just find somewhere to stop up here. 4 1, it's left left. Here, then. With the machinery and the van, stand by reversing the uh, trailers come off the back of it. Matching the descriptions of the reported thefts, Mark alerts control. It could go wrong at any point for various reasons. The occupants could get out and decide to, to offer violence. To me, I'm still on my own in the car. 4 1 vehicle stopped in the road, doing a three point turn. They might be very keen to get away and use a, a weapon such as a, a knife or something like that on us as individuals, their vehicle can quite easily become a weapon as well and a very powerful one. Stand by. Jump out. Out. Why? Out. Jump out. Why? Why? Get out of the van. Oscar Romeo 4 1. Vehicle stopped, so I've had to approach the driver, at which point he's uh, driven off. I now consider this to be a pursuit. Of note, when I've tried to detain the driver, he has driven off, causing me a minor injury to my arm. Close by. 694 Traffic cop Joe Schramm races to help Mark. Uh, so we've just had a vehicle fail to stop for police. Traffic and weather is light. Road conditions are dry and good. There's no other traffic on the road. Stand by, we're stopping in the road. 
is obviously going through a thought process as to I can either stop, hold my hands up and throw my keys out of the window or I can take it up with level. Very good reverse and attempting to uh, ram me. I said a tactic that people will use in a, in a pursuit. To try and reverse ram the, the following police vehicle. Because if they do it sufficiently to disable our car either by activating the airbags or causing some damage. 4 1, being rammed by the subject vehicle, stand by. That takes us out of the pursuit then, so it gives them a great chance to escape. With Joe leading the pursuit, Mark falls in behind him. So at this point we're going sort of 80 miles an hour and the, the, the road layout's not great, it's quite bendy and there's not a, a great deal of view ahead. Luckily, there isn't that much traffic on the roads. I'm confident it's still safe for me to continue. Vehicle continues down the carriageway. 694, vehicle's entering the 40s, still 7-0. Approaching the village and entering the 30s, stand by. Vehicle's heavy braking. As Joe tries to get in front of the van, the driver becomes more desperate. One, there's been a further attempt to ram uh, 694. It's shocking. It took me by surprise, really. It's all self-preservation and how they can cover the tracks and get away with it. I'm a traffic cop, but I also have days off. I have a family. I'm out. 694 is disabled my vehicle. I want everybody to realise that, that their actions do have consequences. Oscar Romeo 41 and back as uh, lead vehicle. With Joe's car too damaged to continue. Single track lane into fields. Mark is on his own again. The potential consequences of what could have happened and someone getting getting hurt or, or worse does give you a little bit of a shudder because ultimately he's driving like that because I'm following him. For one, he's gone through two gates. Um, I'm not going to be able to follow now because of the terrain. Coming up. The suspects switch vehicles. <laughs> stealing another car in a desperate bid to get away. 1 0, we've had contact, it's damage to our vehicle. Tell me what I can't see! You've spread me! Get on the car! And a drunken man refuses arrest. Tell me what I've done! Twenty-five miles east of York. Vehicle reversed and attempting to uh, ram me. North Yorkshire's traffic cops are under threat. Six nine four. I'm now with eight eight one. I'm behind the vehicle. After a spate of thefts, traffic cops Mark Patterson and Joe Schram are crashed into by a gang of suspected thieves desperate to avoid arrest. <laughs> Well, one, there's been a further attempt to ram uh, 694. Well, one, he's gone through two gates. Um, I'm not going to be able to follow now because of the terrain. As the suspects flee across the countryside, all available units flood the area. All right. But with his car out of action, Joe updates colleagues. Where exactly is the van? In the field. Just here. Up the other side. All right, OK. So, right, we'll go and have a look down here. Clothing. I reckon they're in the field. Yeah, sure. Alright, we'll see how far we can get down. Please emergency. Your vehicle's been stolen. At Force Control, there's a report of a car theft. What's your vehicle registration? OK, we'll get police on the way. It's believed the suspects have abandoned the van and stolen a car. 
Oh, yeah, this is it, mate. Next part. Yeah, that there. Yeah, we're on it. Firearms officers pick up the chase. Yeah, it's off, it's off. It's obviously clear from, from this point on that he's, he's not wanting to stop for us. Zero back on one zero, we've got a vehicle failure to stop. What is the location? Black BMW. Overtaken on a blind bend, risk is high. Acknowledged. Acknowledged. Stop, stop, vehicle attempting to ram. As the BMW rams the firearms car. Go on again, go on, get up, get up, mate. Mark catches up. Do it, mate. No cars left. One zero. We've had contact. It's damage to our vehicle. Just Mark and one other police car are now left in the chase. We are one four. We are now pursuing. Four one car two. Yeah, just for a look, uh, it reverse rammed us at the same time as it did the other ARV. Hopefully there's some minor damage, but we're okay to continue on the other one. One for all, it's a temporary loss at the moment. We've got some luck, we're doing up a gravel track. Uh, we've crossed the main level of the road, straight across. Yeah, we've got a monitor in that road, will come out. And that's only 20 minutes to find lifting. While a police helicopter speeds to the area, more officers arrive and spot two suspects. Runner. Runners! Yes, yeah, I don't shut up! Right, brother, what's all right? You got anything else in your pockets, mate? I don't have any money in there. Which pocket will that be in? Yeah. So if you roll towards me, yeah. get your legs in front of you. Search. Yeah, spot on. Any telling you it's going to hurt me or my colleague? Hi. Any telling you it's going to hurt me and my colleague? No. Yeah. BMW keys, huh? The um, rock or something there. As officers continue searching the two men, <laughs> nearby, a third suspect is caught. Right, you're going to stand up and you're going to do it slowly. Come right, on. walk to my colleague over there. He's all over. He's not too oh. He's just 60. I've got the other lad. Me or the lads? The lads are just playing past me there. The motorbike. Go and dress, mate. Um, Step motor vehicle, burglary. All right, stand up. Oh, we're going to all of them after you. You're with him, Jarvin. He's driver, I think. Pardon? I think he's driver. Search him. Come on. 5 4 1 When um, we initially got behind the X5, the second shoe, I'm quite happy that these three males match the description. They've got a good look into the vehicle. Um, I'm probably confident ID in the driver based on his clothing. I think the people that commit the offences quite often just try the luck. I think they've got the tools to turn, I think. Yeah. I think that's what they play on. Are yeah, you all these? Well, at the end of the day, Cheers. they need to get lucky all the time. We only need to get lucky once to catch them. Is that a key? With all three suspects under arrest, they're being taken to custody for questioning. No one's police, I'm guessing. So the fact that we, as a team, managed to arrest all the occupants of the black getaway car... Right, just get under there. ..and to recover stolen property that could then be returned to the owner, it's a very satisfying feeling to be involved in something like that. Move over a bit. 
but they're still, as well as wanting to catch them and bring them to justice, I want to go home at the end of the shift. With 37,000 assaults on police officers recorded each year, at night time, officers double crew whenever they can for safety. I've only got two pairs of trousers and all the zips are broken. So I've been desperate to get some new ones. I might have got a pair of And uh, me, 34. All I've I was got some 36ers. Have you? Yeah, I if I fancy looking like a clown, mate, I'll come to you. You're on a 34. Get You're on to... about six size, mate. <laughs> Traffic cops Rich Clark and Rich Ellis are in the middle of a night shift as York's pubs and clubs start to kick out. Oh, they're shouting us up now, mate. Go on, a bit. Some afternoon, you can see the girl on your way into York. We've just got a couple of young lads on scooters and possibly OPL on these electric scooters. 10 Keep uh, monitoring them, please. We're coming in from Aikham. We've just had a report from our control room and the council operated cameras that there are two scooters, electric scooters, being ridden by potentially intoxicated persons. During the day, we don't seem to have many problems with them, um, but on a night, there are always those going out drinking and they're, and they're uh, hiring them and driving them around whilst drunk. E-scooters are the latest craze. People they don't know the rules of these types of vehicles, so they are vehicles, they're motor vehicles, they're powered by electricity. They're intended and adapted for use on public roads. You need a licence, you need insurance, the law is clear, but people think they're toys still. So lo and behold, you've got uh, an accident waiting to happen. Well, I can't see him, mate. Put it up. One on that, one it? 1600, um, we'll just come down from the bar down into town. Can't see any persons. Who are these, like here? Got them. Just in a bag. Yeah, I've got them now. Hey, up. We've got some. We've got some concerns. Come here, mate. Come here. Yeah, the one you Hello. I think you've been drink drinking and riding an e-scooter. I haven't. So, have you got? Have you got all these e-scooters out here? As Rich Ellis talks to one of the two scooter suspects. Oi, language! A passerby swears at Rich Clark. There's, there's no rule against language, pal. Oh, I think you'll... Come law. here, come here. No, mate, come here, not. listen. No, listen. Pal, listen. Get, just grab you me for swearing. Don't talk to me like you that. You can't just grab me for swearing. Just do us a favour. Just don't, don't, don't pull away. Don't pull away. Put the drink down. Yeah, you need not to drink your I'm locked into dealing with my chap. He's locked into dealing with this chap. And we're doing it independently of one another. Get your hand off me you now. You can't grab me for swearing. Get your hand off me now. It's Stand there. It's off me. Stand there. It's off. Stand there. You can't grab me for swearing. Initially, I want to have a quiet word with him, time to wind his neck in. And the uh, next news is squaring up to me, telling me what I can go and do with myself, etc., etc. And then he's resisted. Five, two, six. Oh, jeez. Give me a van, please. What would we get you a van? Yes. Put your phone away. Don't pull away from me again. Listen to me. I want to breathalyse you. Put your phone away. Put your phone away. Put your phone away. Put your phone away. Just listen to what it says. Put your phone away. Fella, listen, in a minute, I'm going to put you to the floor. I've got reason to believe that you've been riding one of those... I've just had two drinks. ..one of those scooters. Stop tensing up. I've got reason to believe. Listen. Listen to me. Right, you're under arrest. It's point in time. They're being unfit. Unfit to drive. Through drink, do you understand? You don't have to say anything, but it may harm your defence. You do not mention when questioned something which you will later align in court, and anything you do say may be given an evidence. To go down this way, but you're you're resisting me, so you're now under arrest, okay? Tell me what we've done. Public order. Tell me what we've done. Public tell, order. Tell me what I've done. What, what, under what order? 
public order, and swearing in a public place. Right? You're allowed to swear in a public place. Swearing in a public place. You're allowed to swear in a public place. And you're drunk and disorderly. I'm not drunk and disorderly. Yes, you are. Please. Rich! I'm shouting for Rich to come and help me at first one on my own. We're both quite experienced, we're trained, we know what we're doing. He's not coming, which tells me, you know, he's struggling with his lad, around his corner, dealing with that. That's obviously developed, he's not coming to me, I can't get to him, he can't get to me. Right, Mayor? Can, can you just tell me what I've done? Can you, can you tell me what I've done? What is wrong with Coming up, backup arrives. Turn them up, turn them TV news at 10! Jump in! <laughs> But tempers continue to flare. Get on the floor now. Move that way, Alfred. Tell me what I've done. Move that way. Tell me what I've done. And after an alleged drunken assault, the traffic cops are forced to take action. A little mug. You got a woman. No, 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 no. You got a woman. Two of them come down. Calm yourself down. Come here, big man. Come over here. After a report of two drunken men riding scooters at the end of a night out, traffic cops Rich Ellis and Rich Clark are dealing with an angry passerby. You can't you, just grab me for swearing. Talk to me like you that. You can't just grab me for swearing. Rich! And one of the men caught on camera. Listen to me. Right, you're under arrest. It's point in time. They'll be unfit. Can you tell me what I've done? Put your hands behind your back. Put your hands Local police arrive to assist the traffic cops. Put your other hand behind your back. Put your other hand behind your back. <laughs> my colleagues down the road, a load of carrying on, I can't see what's happening, so it is worrying. I can't leave my man, because I've got a responsibility for him, he's in cuffs. Do as you're told. Put your hands behind your back. I'm I want to Is he all right? It's another day in paradise. Hey, mate, you all right? We'll get him up. Right, mate, we're going to give you a quick search, all right? Put straighten up. Grab his legs, mate. He's not complying. Stop messing about. Why don't you be asked for? Because I'm searching your pockets. Find out what you got on you. Get him on the side, mate. I'll roll him this way because I don't want to roll him into mayonnaise, all right? Come round, fella. Watch your head. Watch my head. Watch up. Calm yourself down, down. isn't it? Covered in mayonnaise now, aren't you? Calm down. Back. Jump in. Jump in. <laughs> Rich Clark is struggling with the angry passerby. Tell me what I've done. Tell me what I've done. Tell me. Yeah, you're under arrest. Why? That's it now. Why? Drunk and disorderly. Why? And swearing in a public place. Oh, now, yeah. now you're going to resist arrest. Tell me what. Get on the... Right. Tell me what. I've Get on the floor now. Move that way, Harvey. Tell me what I've done. Move that way. Tell me what I've done. Move your eyes. Tell me what I've done. Right. Tell me what I've done. Get on the floor. Get on the floor. Tell me what I've done. Parvis spray. Basically, it's fired into your eyes. It's basically like if you've ever had hot chilies and you rub your eye, it's that effect, but far worse. See, you've spared me! You Get on the floor! So, essentially, you've lost one of your primary senses straight away. Uh, that disorients you, and that gives us that opportunity to, you know, try and win back the situation. You've been told! I can't see! You've been pardoned! You stupid! Bring his hand, he's on. Get his hand, Get your Tell me why! Oh. Tell me, wife. John, I'm joking, yeah. Stop swearing, I'm speaking to you. Please, where are you swearing in the eye? Because you're resisting arrest. Right, Stop swearing. Get, we get Why? Inside? It's not illegal to swear. Yeah, it is, actually. It's public order of arrest. Right, well, well, right, you're under arrest, public order of arrest. Drunk and disorderly. I'm not doing arrest. Drunk and disorderly. Yes, you are, mate. You want some limb restraints? Swear me for no reason. Just, fella, what's wrong with you? What, what's wrong with me for no reason? Get out of pockets, you... You've been searched on the section 30... Yeah. Because you're under arrest. Oh, well. Oh. Right. Grab that watch. Okay. 
Right, right fella, we're gonna have to get you into the back of our van. Why? Tell me why. Are you, 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 you gonna come nice and peacefully? No, I'm tied up. Like a... Are you gonna Sorry, come nice and peacefully? What can I do, mate? You're gonna have to do what we tell you to do. All right, well, what can I do? Are you gonna do that? What? Well, I can't do what else, can I? Oh, no, exactly. All right, so you still asking a stupid question. Forward. Okay. Right. Now we're gonna Don't tell me now! Tell me! Yeah, what have I done? It's your friend. Why? What the fuck? What the fuck? What the fuck? What the fuck? One, two, two, three. No. Oh! What, she don't kick out. Cheers, lads. With the passerby on his way to the police station. For what? And fire a second fire. Rich Ellis is still dealing with the e-scooter riders. If you can get him in, I'll, yeah, be, yeah. I'll be down in five minutes yeah, or like fine. that. All right, mate. You got one. You got one. Yeah, one the other lad is stood there, still there, because he's the other rider. He's the rider of the other e-scooter. Yeah. So the concern was, originally, because you've been seen on camera riding around, that you didn't drive, didn't drive in. I genuinely didn't know it. So you can't do it. Just I like, genuinely didn't know it. Just like riding a motorbike oh, or a moped or... I know what you're saying. It doesn't matter. That's drink driving, same thing. Drink oh, driving, okay. listen up. Right, mate, you're under arrest and such a vote over the road traffic act, right? Oh, he'll, he'll, he'll have gone now. Slipped no. his cuffs. Slipped his cuffs. Time, so. Right, go back in here. He's got my cuffs, rigid cuffs, that are both locked, so the loops are closed, and he's got that held in his hand. Fella! Fella, 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 calm yourself down. And he's smashing it, smashing it, on the back of the Perspex van. And at that point, it went from, what are you doing, to is going to seriously hurt himself. You know, these are steel, the sharp, got jagged edges, mashing it into his face, swearing, I'm going to hurt, I'm going to hurt you, I'm going to kill myself. Calm yourself down. Of this, this incident. So at that point, we've got to get him out of there, we've got to extract him. Yeah, you ready? So what do we do? We open the door. Clark is angled to exploit the gap and he's fired his parva through the gap into the rear of the van and giving him a good dosing of it. And the effect was immediate, absolutely immediate. Come here, what are you doing? Get out, get him on the floor, gently, 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 watch his head, watch his head, watch his head. Arm behind your arm back. Arm behind your back. I've got his arm, I've got his arm, I've got his arm. Get your other arm out. Good lad, put it up here. Yeah, I've got some, mate. All right, they'll double lock, hang on. Honestly, Paul, this has escalated into some for absolute form of nonsense. Yes, there you go. You should have got you should yourself white. Here, mate, use this. Come up onto your bottom. Just give him a little, just primary survey, him, his top, please. It's, it's from his head down because he's been smashing himself in the face with the cuffs. Let's make sure he's not got any injuries before we put him in the Sergeant, Inspector, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to. You're going to hear from my sister. The sergeant's behind you, pal. Just lift up and look up to the sky. Inspector. We're trying to look after you now. Duty inspector. Let us look after you. My... You're going to listen from my police mother. This yeah, has escalated right. for yeah. nothing. All right, okay. Could have been quite nasty. He looked like he was walloping himself in quite a severe manner, but thankfully, he looks like it's nothing more than just scuffs at the moment. So we've had to re cuff him and get him back in and expedite him to the police station. Yes, jump forward. Is. Use them feet. Jump, jump forward. Jump forward. No, I'm not. You can jump. You can't walk, you can jump forward though, you're a bit too far away from the van. Just, jump forward, just jump forward, mate. Hop. 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 Yes, yes. Come on in. Like so, yeah, yeah, right. I think riding a, an e-scooter with booze on is just probably a small problem in his life currently, judging by the way he's reacting. These things happen, it's part of parcel being the police. Unfortunately, you know, we do come into conflict with people that don't want to see it from our perspective and don't want to comply. Sometimes we have to get hands on and we, we train for that. You get someone like today who's probably so drunk that um, it's just unwilling to comply, not able to listen. The passerby and the two riders will undergo further checks at the station. That lad just had this, literally finished it off in my presence. Which one? The one I locked up, the him. 
He's finished that off in my presence and screwed the can up. And we walked into the shop? Yeah. I, I had him on floor there, in mayonnaise. Right, go on. I had him in mayonnaise, mate. What's going on? <laughs> you didn't get covered in mayonnaise. You have not had a good night. The officer's last job at the scene is to deal with the abandoned e-scooters. Just have to re remain here, won't they? Well, you're supposed to take them back to a docking point. There's one around the corner, isn't there? Is yeah, there? There's one just down there. Is there? Yeah. It's the right thing to do. As much as the brakes on and it's like pedalling uphill. So, what have you got in for? Public order and drunken disorderly. Yeah. And resist the rest. So, we've got three locked up, one public order, two for drink driving offences, and uh, we're a bit out of puff. Clark and Ellis follow the arrested men to York custody. All my trousers are broken, so I've got to be careful about what I'm doing with them. The, the biggest thing for me there, and the number of times it flashed through my head, was don't get mayonnaise on them, because we were slipping and sliding in mayonnaise uh, with my lad, who's, I think he took a dive into an empty kebab. Uh, carton with a load of salt. Okay, we're getting you out now. Are you going to be here? Just calm down, we're not on it. Yeah, alright, we'll have to get out, alright. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Appreciate you saying sorry, no, alright. Please stay calm while you're here, alright. They're off, walk now. Don't rub them, mate. Don't rub your eyes, it'll get worse. Just try your best to resist, mate. We're required to provide two specimens of breath for analysis by means of an approved device, that's this machine here. I warn you that failure to provide either of these specimens will render you liable to prosecution. Do you agree to provide two specimens of breath paralysis? He's blown, his lowest reading was 86 micrograms, so we're looking at charging him with uh, driving whilst unfit through drink. The bigger lad of the two, he has provided specimens of breath, the lowest reading was below the charge limit of 40 micrograms, so he'll be released, no further action. The one that was gobbling off at Clark in the street, he's come in, he's going to be charged with a public order offence in the morning. So e-scooters, we're finding that a lot of the users of these are intoxicated or are driving them inappropriately, and it's a, it's a lump of moving metal. It's either you that's going to come a cropper, so you're going to get hit by another vehicle, potentially killed or seriously injured, or you're going to hit somebody else. So yeah, you know, the message is quite clear, don't use them if you're drunk. Coming up. Have you got anything to drink tonight? I've had a beer, yeah. A drunk van man resists arrest. You're not being client, you're resisting by pushing forward. Difference. Don't swear, mate. No one's swearing at you, are they? Yeah. You boys are pathetic. And the traffic cops step in to stop a late night fight. Little mug, you got a woman. No, 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 no. You got a woman, two of them come Calm down. Calm yourself it. down. What's going come on? here, big man. Come over here. Need to be down there. I actually have to go through town with all the drunk people. In North Yorkshire, it's kicking out time for pubs and clubs. Traffic cop Joe Schram is on patrol. Six nine four. Nearby, Chris Story and Sergeant Tim Wilson are also on shift. Now we'll get that stopped. Yeah, two thirty-seven. Well, oh, unless it's a misread. On the outskirts of the city, Joe spots a suspicious van driver. Hello? Have you got anything to drink tonight? I've had a beer, yeah. Yeah. More than one? No, one. One, right. You got your ID on you? Yeah. Cool. Right then, what I require from you is a sample of breath. You're actually watching him while I get a breath kit. Thank you. The people doing it, I think they tend to fall into one of the two brackets, um, especially when we catch them. They are either apologetic, or I only, I only had one, or I only had two, or they're quite arrogant and they're a bit annoyed that they've been caught. As backup arrives for Joe... He's currently jumping up and down on the spot, so... The driver is behaving strangely. <laughs> 
a new one. This is a new one. Are we alright? There's nothing to be scared of. No, I'm allowed to jog. If your last drink was recent and you're jogging on the spot, all you're doing is pushing that into your blood quicker. We'd have to jog very quickly for a very long time to get the alcohol out of his system completely. Keep going, keep going, keep going, thank you. We've ran the whole time. Okay. That's 97. The reading is three times over the limit. Don't pull away, don't pull away. I'm not pulling away. You are. Look, mate, what's going to happen yeah, is if you don't calm no, down, you're no, going to end up on the floor. Away. You're under arrest, so you're under control. I know. So you can't go doing what you want right, to do. I'm just just calm I'm yourself to down. And do what I want to right. Do. No, you can't. You're under arrest, mate. He's asked you to stand against the foot of the car. He said I was scared I was going to run away. Where am I running to? Listen, let me stand up. I've been compliant my whole time. You're not being compliant. You're resisting well, by pushing forward. Different. You're resisting by pushing forward. Wait, they're walking me. As I'm talking to you, officer. Don't swear, mate. No one's swearing at you, are they? Yeah, no, but I'm being forced, so it's not, not being a comfortable forced. situation. Yeah, I'm like, calm down. I'm not going. <laughs> you boys are pathetic. There's many ways around it, so there's no excuses for drink driving. Just watch your head on way, mate. You right stepping up? This bloke is going to get behind a wheel. If it hits somebody, it's going to cause serious injury, if not kill them. We're here to make the roads a safer place. He's made a bad decision and it ultimately he needs to pay for it. <laughs> He's what? Chunder everywhere. Oh no. He's been sick in back at van. It's a good job we didn't take him in car, innit? <laughs> Having avoided a car valet, Chris and Tim's shift is almost finished. After the breakfast, you know. How do you know we're But up ahead, there's a man standing in the road. For what reason? my girlfriend knocked her out. Where's your girlfriend? Well, she just ran off. I don't know. The, man, the alleged assault has remained at the scene. We were in Pop World, he asked her to dance a couple of times, she told him to go away. Yeah. And then we came out, uh, he turned up around here, and then he said something to her, so she said, look, just get away from me. Right. Pushed him away, and then he literally, he just banged her straight in the face, like not to clean over. Do you know this lad? No. Why not? What are you doing? Little mug, you got. No, 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 no. no, 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 no. What are you doing? So come Calm down yourself here. down. Let's go come on. here, big man. Come over here. You assaulted a woman, you little wronger. Trying to read Yeah, but listen, yeah, but listen. Why am I being put in you're the You're not, you're not. Listen, listen to me. Don't do it, mate. Listen to me. Don't get wound up. With backup already on hand, Officers continue to investigate the claims being made. We were a bit confused with what's happened. Basically, this lad here has allegedly assaulted his it's partner a, right, and him. It's a piece of scum. It's a piece of scum. All right, well, that might be the case, but let us just sort it, yeah? And he punched me in the side of the head twice. Well, it's good that we've got you here and that we've got him as well, in it, So we can deal with it. He's the weirdo, not me. Well, that's what we're trying to find out, innit? As a police officer, you... you, you go through life where people generally don't tell you the truth but our job is to establish the truth and we do have people that will try to deceive us but you know I try to take people as they come I try to you know believe everything people say until they give me a reason not to. It's your girlfriend that's gone off at the minute? Yeah you? well she's too scared to come down here. Right we'll get sorted now she's come back. Yeah? Who's that? It's his girlfriend. I assume so I haven't spoken to her so I don't know but If it was on about me, wouldn't you have then pointed across at me and go, oh, it's him? Well, unfortunately, I don't know. Yeah, I understand I your speak, situation. I am speaking to her, and but, secondly, but I'm stood some people who get assaulted don't see who assaults them. But he seems to I think you've been involved. What's going on? 
Hello. Uh, right. So there's been an allegation from the Times I know, 23 I know, Rod, to this last year that... So, the, just listen to me, under arrest on suspicion of assault, times two. <laughs> well, you're not on honestly... Just... Oh, please. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, I understand what you're saying, yeah. Just walk that way and took back his fan, bud. He was pretty adamant that he hadn't done it and saying, look, she hadn't pointed me out, but obviously she was a bit more reserved than her partner was when pointing him out, I'm guessing. Just mind your head as you get in. Because oh. I don't want to get in trouble, but also I don't want to not say anything. No idea who he even is. It's not our everyday thing, but it's definitely something that we turn our hands to when, when required. And ultimately, you know, you join to protect person and property. And if somebody's getting assaulted and there's somebody suspect there, then you basically get out and you get involved. In the last six months, there have been almost 200 instances of attacks on North Yorkshire's emergency service workers. The police can't pick and choose who we deal with, particularly on a night. We just have to deal with what's presented to us. Alcohol changes people, but there's still people at the end of the day and we, we've got to deal with what we've got in front of us. And sometimes it's just taking that step back and calming everything down, dealing with them. Drinks here to stay, isn't it? it's a big business, people enjoy it, but unfortunately, you know, it comes with its problems. People need to know the limits. In this episode, after a crime spree involving a number of thefts across the Yorkshire Moors. The alarm never went off, it is alarm, so I don't know how they've got in. Two out of the three suspects caught by officers have been remanded in prison awaiting a sentence. He's driver, I think. I think he's driver. A third suspect is currently released on police bail due to being a minor, but is also awaiting sentence. The drunken, angry scooter rider who slipped his cuffs. Calm yourself down, down. there. Covered in mayonnaise now, aren't you? Was found to be nearly three times over the limit. At court, he received a driving ban and a fine. False. The man arrested by Rich Clark for being drunk and disorderly was released without action the following day. The drunk van driver, arrested by Joe Schram, was banned from the roads for 18 months. An unpaid work requirement for driving over the limit. He's the weirdo, not me. Well, on. that's what we're trying to find out, isn't it? He punched me in the side of the head twice. Firstly, I'm stood outside. And no action was taken against the man arrested in relation to an alleged assault. The moral And the traffic cops are back next Monday at 8. Rob and Dave fight to save the life of a rare type of sheep as springtime on the farm continues new tomorrow at 8. Following a driver undertaking at near 100 miles an hour, it's like the wacky races for the motorway cops catching Britain speeders. You next.